This video is going to cover how to set up the PSF DEX Seller Wallet. This video applies to both uh, the Bitcoin Cash chain as well as the eCash blockchain. The setup steps are identical for both blockchains. Um, so whereas the Buyer Wallet is a simple web app, selling tokens is a little more involved because the seller needs to be online in order to accept counter offers and finalize the trade. So this video is going to cover how to install and set up the seller wallet. So before I get started, this QR code will take you to this gist on GitHub that includes links to the resources that I'm going to talk about in this video. And before I get into the meat, if you get stuck or need help or need clarification and the documentation isn't enough for you, you can go to this Telegram channel in order to get help. This is a community developer help channel for the PSF DEXs. So before I get started in the setup, I'm assuming that you've already covered some prerequisites. And uh, so I'm assuming that you're using an Ubuntu Linux computer. Uh, right now the software does not support any other operating system. You need to run it on Ubuntu Linux. I'm also assuming that you have Node.js 16 or higher installed, as well as Docker and Docker Compose. And so if you haven't done these steps yet, there is a YouTube video. And again, if you follow, the, these links will be in that gist uh, with the QR code uh, in the first slide. So there's a video on how to set up these software packages on Ubuntu, as well as some notes uh, of the instructions that you can copy and paste in order to install Node, Docker, and Docker Compose. So if you haven't watched them and you haven't set these up, stop here, go do that, and then come back. So let's go through the steps. Uh, the first step is to clone the repository, then we'll install the NPM dependencies, then we'll create a wallet, and we'll pull down the Docker images. <clears throat> so I'm going to show how to do that. I have uh, Ubuntu Linux running in a virtual machine here, and so it's a brand new fresh install, and I have uh, Node 16, Docker version 20, and Docker Compose version 1.27. So that's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to go into a work directory and in this example, I'm going to use the eCash blockchain, uh, but the steps are identical for the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. Uh, so th the very first step is to clone the, the DEX repository. So you can do that by going to github.com permissionless software foundation. And here is the XEC DEX. If you don't see it there, you can, you can type in here, XEC DEX. So I'm going to clone that repository. XEC is a symbol for eCash. If you want to do it for Bitcoin Cash, it's called BCH DEX. And so you would instead clone this repository if you want to do the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. Okay, so the directory has been uh, cloned. And now I'm going to install the NPM dependencies by running NPM install. Okay, so now that the dependencies have been installed, we can go into the production, because that's where the Docker containers are. That's what we're going to be running. And there's three directories. We're going to ignore the RPI Docker. That's if you want to run this on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, go into the scripts folder, and there are several scripts here. We're going to use Node.js to run uh, create wallet, and this will create the wallet that's used by the DEX. So this is the wallet we're going to use. Normally you wouldn't want to share this information with anyone, but this is just a temporary wallet that I'm using for demonstration purposes. So now that uh, the wallet's been created and the node dependencies have been installed, we can navigate to the production Docker container and pull down the Docker containers. Um, that's Docker Compose pull. And this will take uh, 
a few to several minutes, depending on your internet connection, it needs to pull down a couple gigabytes of, of Docker images. With the Docker images pulled down, it's now time to run them. So we can run them with docker compose up dash D for daemon or disconnected, which will run them in the background. And in this first step, we're going to uh, do it. There's a little bit extra setup, but the idea is to run them and then check the IPFS logs and make sure that IPFS comes up and runs properly. Almost up. One more container. Okay. So we can check the logs with docker logs dash f for follow and then the IPFS container which is IPFS dash xec dash dex and it should look like this um, it created a new ID and the daemon is up it's ready and the swarm is listening so that's what it should look like and then go ahead and bring them back down uh, because we need to change a configuration setting in IPFS Okay, so now they're down, we can update IPFS. So roughly the steps are, we, we're here, we just brought the Docker containers back down. We need to edit the config file to enable access to port 5001. That's the port that lets the pay to write database control the IPFS node. And that's necessary in order for uh, the pay to write database to sync. And so that's how all these different decentralized exchanges on the internet um, stay in sync with one another is over the pay to write database. Then once we do that, we'll bring the containers back up and then we'll make sure that the pay to write database is syncing. So to do this, and just to make sure that the Docker containers are down, I like to run this command, ps-all. I'll go up a directory and there will now be a, a new fourth folder called data in here. We're gonna go into the data, go into the go IPFS subdirectory which also has a data directory. And there's this config file, and that's what we're gonna edit. And we have to use the sudo command because this was created with root. Uh, and I like to use the nano text editor. And what we're looking for here is port 5001, which is right here. It's the API port, and it defaults to localhost. And we need to change that from 127.0.0, which is localhost, to 0.0.0.0, which opens it up to the other Docker containers. Um, so uh, save that file and go navigate back to the Docker uh, directory and then we can bring these Docker containers back up. So we edited the config file, we're bringing the containers back up, and now we can check to make sure that the pay to write database is syncing. I'm just gonna switch back over here. So if I run Docker PS, I can see the five containers, and I'm gonna go Docker logs, F for follow, pay to write database. <clears throat> so let me walk through what the logs look like here. So it came up and it, it had some issues at the very beginning because it was waiting for the IPFS node to connect, but then it finally connected to that IPFS node. And you should see these successfully connected to peer node, successfully connected to peer node. These are the bootstrap nodes. These are additional relays that it's connecting to. So it's, it's reaching out and talking to other instances of the pay to write database on the internet over the IPFS network. And um, sometimes you'll see an error here where it says cannot find manifest and it'll just keep restarting until it 
eventually connects to an existing Paterite database where it can bootstrap the manifest file. It needs that in order to start syncing. And then when it's syncing, it looks like this. Uh, you'll see can append entry. And so this is an entry from another instance of the Paterite database that it's downloading. And it's, it's, so this means that it's synchronizing to the other uh, Paterite databases. So I'm going to let that run in the background. And now that that's running, we can look at the the Dex soft uh, the Dex backend. So I'm going to go Docker logs f for follow and XCC Dex, or if it was Bitcoin Cash, it would be BCH Dex. And this is um, an example of the database syncing. So we've got the Paterite database, which then talks to the uh, the Dex backend. And so these are en new entries that uh, the Paterite database is making the DEX aware of. And so the DEX will get these new entries. And so from here, you kind of just want to give it about a half hour and let it sync up. And uh, so ensure that it's syncing. And so I just showed what it looks like when it's syncing. And um, I opened up the logs that I just showed for the Paterite database and the DEX and I can continue to watch it sync. At this point, it's good just to give it some time, give it maybe a half hour to an hour uh, to sync up. If the Paterite database looks like it stops syncing, if you stop seeing uh, this type of uh, output, if it, just, if it just looks like this type of output uh, forever, then um, there's a new entry that just came through. Uh, you can bring the containers down with uh, Docker Compose down and then bring them back up with Docker Compose up and that'll sort of uh, nudge the Paterite database and get it to get it to continue syncing. So <clears throat> ideally what you'd want to do at this point is wait for half hour to an hour to let the Paterite database and the deck sync up with the rest of the instances on the network. Uh, but at this point you can open your web browser and navigate to localhost port 4500 and this is the the user interface for the the seller wallet it looks just like the buyer wallet except this is running locally and it's talking to that local instance of the dex and the next step that you want to do is make sure that the wallet that the user interface is working with matches the wallet that we created earlier so this is the wallet that we created earlier. Here's the 12 word mnemonic. I'm going to copy that. And so there's no NFTs listed, so it's still syncing. Let's see if it has any fungible tokens. Yeah, so it's still syncing. It's still looking for the, the tokens that are currently on the network, but we can navigate to the wallet area. If we look here, we notice that this does not, these 12 words do not match these 12 words. So I copied those and I'm going to go down here and paste them in here and import those 12 words. So that makes sure that the web wallet interface is using the same wallet that the back end is using. So if we send Bitcoin Cash to one, we're sending Bitcoin Cash, to, or I guess eCash to both, including tokens. So at this point, when it comes up, after it finishes syncing, you can send, you can go to uh, the eCash section, <clears throat> and you can send eCash and eTokens. And when you send tokens, the tokens will appear here, and you'll be able to, uh, there will be a sell button that you can click uh, in order to list the token for sale. And... Uh, yeah, and so that's this. Oh, and there's there's some fungible tokens that are coming through. I think some of these aren't totally valid, but these are some of the ones that it found. So we can see that it's already syncing. So this concludes the setup. Again, if you run into issues, uh, navigate to this gist where you can find a link to this Telegram channel where you can reach out to get help.